Hello everyone, this is separation processes course. Today our topic is humidification processes. Humidification processes. Okay, what do you mean by humidification processes? Uh, humidification processes is a process where you have uh, two components. One of these components is condensable while the other is non-condensable. What do I mean by this? Uh, okay. What do I mean by this? Okay. Uh, it is like a typical example is our air. Air. If you have air. No, air is a gas. It is non-condensable. It is difficult to condense. Unless you operate at very low temperature and very high pressure, you can condense the air. But usually air is a gas and it is difficult to condense, so it's con considered as non-condensable component. And you know, the air, there are some humid. We have some water, some water uh, vapors inside the air. Uh, so this air, we have some water, we have some water, H2O, that are dissolved in the air. And you know, water is condensable component. It is easy to condense. Uh, you know, because, uh, why? Because at one atmosphere, the boiling point of water is 100 degrees C. So if you operate at lower than 100 degrees C, the water will condense. So water is easily condensable. Okay. So let's let's give them a symbols. Let's give the condensable fluid, which is water, a symbol A, and the non-condensable gas as B. Okay, so A is condensable component and B is non-condensable component. Uh, the condensable component which is A usually we call it usually we call it moisture moisture and the non-condensable one we call it which is air in this case we call it moisture moisture free free means without moisture moisture free gas so the non-condensable fluid we call it moisture free gas and the condensable one which is dissolved inside the non-condensable one is called the moisture a typical example is our air the question here is what are the applications of humidification processes in chemical industry simply the applications we have too many applications one of these applications is something called cooling tower uh, some, something called cooling tower well this is cooling tower it's the tower used to circulate the water so you have, for example, water, H2O is moving, and then uh, you can use it, uh, for example, in uh, heat exchanger, for example, or whatever. Then this water is heated, so you recycle it back, and then feed it to the cooling tower. Then this cooling tower will use the air in order to cool this water back to the desired temperature, and recycle it back to the heat exchanger or whatever equipment where you use the cooling water and then take the water back and cool it and so on so this is a typical uh, example of uh, uh, equipment which is a cooling tower that uses humidification principles okay so this is the meaning of humidification there are some terminologies there are some terminologies related to humidification process. Let's discuss them step by step. We have something called absolute 
absolute mass humidity absolute mass humidity uh, this is represented by the following equation it has a simple h h is equal to the mass of condensable component a over the mass of non-condensable component b okay or another relation is molar mass of a partial pressure of a over molar mass of b partial pressure uh, no uh, total pressure minus partial pressure of a so you can use this relations to get the absolute mass humidity also we have another thing called molar or molal humidity molal molal humidity simply this molal humidity it has a simple hm it's equal to partial pressure of a over total pressure minus partial pressure of a okay and also we have something called saturation saturation humidity saturation humidity the saturation humidity hs is equal to molar mass of a saturation pressure of a divided by molar mass of b multiplied by total pressure minus saturation pressure of a so this is called saturation humidity again what's the benefit of calculating such things yeah, what's the benefit of finding absolute mass humidity or molar humidity or saturation humidity these um, these things uh, usually we need it to design uh, the equipment for example the cooling tower that we have just discussed to design this cooling tower we need to do such calculations these calculations will help us uh, to design such an equipment okay uh, that's why and uh, these are some terminologies and some definitions that we usually use to achieve this purpose okay and also we have another thing called relative humidity relative humidity sometimes called relative saturation relative humidity or relative saturation is has the fo following formula h r equal to partial pressure of a over saturation pressure of a multiplied by 100 percent okay yeah and also we have another thing called percentage humidity percentage humidity what's this percentage humidity it has the simple hp or sometimes it is called percent saturation percent saturation or percent humidity it is simply h which is the absolute mass humidity over hs which is the saturation humidity the multiply by 100 percent so this is a parameter known as percentage humidity also we have something called humid volume humid volume this humid volume has the simple vh vh is equal to r universal gas constant t absolute temperature over p absolute pressure multiplied by one over molar mass of b plus h absolute mass humidity over molar mass of a so this is a quantity called humid volume finally oh no uh, we have also a quantity called humid heat humid heat this humid heat has the simple cs as equal to c specific heat of component b plus c specific heat of component a 
multiply by absolute mass humidity so this is known as humid heat finally we have a quantity called the total enthalpy total enthalpy total enthalpy this total enthalpy it has a simple delta H it has a simple of delta H cap is equal to Cs which has humid heat multiply by absolute temperature minus T naught initial temperature plus delta H of vaporization the heat of vaporization at T naught multiplied by absolute mass humidity so this quantity is known as total enthalpy total enthalpy ok uh, so these are some terminologies related to uh, the humidification process keep in mind that all of this all of this uh, quantities are or can be determined using these equations for any system for any A and for any B so A could be air uh, I don't know ethanol uh, uh, um, uh, uh, carbon uh, carbon chloride or carbon tetrachloride or anything water B could be A could be water it could be benzene could be anything this equation are applicable for all types of A and B okay now is there an easier way to use for specifically for air water system why especially air water system because it is the most fundamental or most famous system in humidification processes where air is the non-condensable component which is B and water is the condensable component which is A for this system we have a something called psychometry chart or humidification chart psychometry chart this psychometry chart can be used to determine a specific parameter without using any equations okay so you can use this uh, psychometry chart humidification chart which is this chart this chart is called humidification chart or psychometry chart you can find it from uh, any separation book or from internet this chart can be used to determine some humidification parameters uh, that are related to humidification process but be careful this chart is only for air this chart is only for air H2O system, air water system. Air is B and water is A. So don't use this chart for any other system. Don't use this chart, for example, for benzene methanol system or any other system. This chart was specifically developed for the water air system. This chart is only for water air system. Okay, so uh, in this lecture, we are going to learn how to read this chart how to read this humidification chart you can see here there are too many lines are too many lines and uh, yeah too many scales so to simplify this uh, I will discuss them step by step line by line so you need to have the humidification chart uh, near you beside you need to have the humidification chart beside you while watching this video 
uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to discuss this chart uh, as components okay okay so from this chart you can read eight parameters you can read eight parameters these parameters are usually needed to design a cooling tower for example or for any other humidification process okay but the first thing you need at least at least you need two known parameters you need two known parameters you need to have two known parameters at least in order to determine the rest to get the all of eight parameters you need to know at least two parameters then you can determine the other six parameters okay so you need at least to have two parameters why because if you have two parameters see this is a two-dimensional graph this is a two-dimensional graph and as we know even from school level to determine a point to determine a point in a two-dimensional diagram we need to have two parameters at least at least two parameters it is like when you have uh, it is like in math when you have x y diagram so if you want to determine any point you need to have x coordinate y coordinate then you can get this point once you get this point in the humidification chart you can use it which is called also psychometric chart psychometric chart or psychometry chart you can use it to get the rest six parameters so total eight parameters okay so how to read the psychometric chart now I'm assuming that you have this chart in front of you okay I'm assuming that you have this chart in front of you then let's discuss it step by step you can see that there is a horizontal scale like this horizontal scale which represents the x-axis from this horizontal scale you can read something called dry dry bulb temperature dry bulb temperature and it has a unit depends if it is English system or uh, uh, or SI system so it will have specific units okay so you can use this horizontal axis horizontal axis in order to read a parameter known as dry bulb temperature this dry bulb temperature is a parameter again it's a parameter usually it is useful in designing uh, some humidification processes like uh, a uh, cooling tower or any other humidification process okay and from the same from the same diagram say commit diagram you're gonna see x axis the x axis the x scale uh, sorry sorry <laughs> y axis this is y axis so the y axis in this chart represents something called absolute humidity that we already discussed using equations so this y axis represents the absolute humidity the absolute humidity okay uh, okay now in the diagram you have an x axis which is as we agreed before it is dry bulb temperature okay and you can see that you have a curve called saturation curve 100 percent saturation what's the benefit of this curve simply suppose you use the two known parameters and you specify the point to be somewhere here okay then if you draw a horizontal line if you draw a horizontal line from your point that uh, again you specify this point using the two known the two known parameters the two known parameters that you already know you use them to locate yourself to locate the point 
then if you draw a horizontal line from this point and intersect with this saturation curve then you draw vertical line the intersection with the x-axis is gonna be your dew point temperature your dew point temperature so this is known as dew point temperature and this is how to determine it okay then you're gonna see that we have some lines like those see you have this line and then you have which is the saturation line the saturation line then you have some curves like this you have some curves like this these curves you can use them to read something called you can use this curve to read something called wet wet bulb temperature wet bulb temperature also it is known as adiabatic temperature wet bulb temperature or adiabatic temperature so you can use this curves in order to read the wet bulb temperature also in the same diagram you gonna see some curves like this you're gonna see some curves like this Okay, these curves you can use them to read something called relative humidity. Relative. Okay, so you can use these curves to read the relative humidity. Also, you're gonna see some curves like this. Okay these curves you can use them to read humid volume humid volume okay also if we go back to psychometric diagram you're gonna see uh, yeah gonna see these scales okay which are something like this scale like this so this scale is used for what uh, this scale is used to read something called specific specific enthalpy specific enthalpy okay so this curve can be used to get specific enthalpy okay then lastly you gonna see some dashed curves some dashed curves they are not solid right they are dashed dashed curves okay these dashed curves are used as enthalpy collection collection so what do you do you read the specific enthalpy value from this scale then you correct for this value using the enthalpy correction now there's a problem now, sometimes your point for any of this either this curve this curve uh, for any of this curve sometimes your point lies somewhere in between for example somewhere here then what you do for example suppose this is one and this is two then what you do you need to interpolate so you draw a hypothetical line and say for example this is something in between then this would be 1.5 for example so whenever you don't have your point lie in any curve 
then what to do you need to interpolate to read this value so that's it that's all for the psychometric chart remember this chart is only used for air water system this chart is only used for air water system for other systems if you have any other systems then you need to apply the equations that we have already discussed and by the way equations also are applicable for air and water system okay so for the air and water system you have two options either you can use psychometry chart or you can apply the equations so that's it that's all for humidification process of course it is a very big topic humidification process and application of humidification process but uh, that's uh, up to this that's what i'm going to cover in this separation processes course uh, playlist yeah so that's it and this is the end of separation process course thank you for your listening i wish you all the best